as a session file gets built, you're probably going to have to deal with the complexities of alternate players or understudies. So while the structure of a show doesn't change when the players change, the settings associated with these players probably will. EQs and dynamics, things which make the sound personal to one person. And our players panel allows us to control and update those settings. The players panel allows us to build a library of players for each role in the session. And as players change, either during the rehearsals or during the actual running of a show, the cue list can be switched on the fly to pull in the settings of a new player without any complicated manual updating of the show file. Once your players are added, it's as simple as selecting the required player and either firing the current cue again or firing the next cue in the show. From that point on, you can continue programming or mixing the show confident that you are now working with the correct set of channel settings. The Theatre Options panel allows us to define the differences between players. It's likely to be just the settings which control the sound of a player, EQ and dynamics, etc. But ultimately, you have the choice of whatever creative differences you'd like them to be. On to control group programming, we're going to open up the CGQs panel. As a side note, one of the options in our T software is to disable the join CGs function on the work surface LCD buttons. This is important and really worth doing. It does require a console restart though, but really you should be using the CGs panel for all of your CG programming. The columns represent individual CGs and the rows are the cues. Using the keyboard and mouse, we can very quickly populate this panel. The ripple down function ripples membership changes down the show until it sees an existing programming entry. So working from the top down and picking channels in the assigned panel, a map of CG membership can be built. Finally, in the CGQs panel, you can build scratch groups of channels with the assign panel, holding shift and selecting multiple cells. These scratch groups or sets can be reused or saved for later. You'll notice that the CG master channels have auto mute enable. This takes care of input channel mute programming. When input channels are added to a CG, the channel mute is automatically set to off. And when an input channel leaves a CG, the channel mute is set to on. This ensures that only channels under CG control are ever unmuted. Of course, you can switch this off per CG, but it's the usual workflow for Digico T sessions. With the release of console software version 1528, we've added some new advanced programming features. So let's have a look. Matrix settings have always been controllable via cues, but with the demands of modern theatre sound design, we needed a mechanism to reuse matrix settings and have them automatically track across the show. Following the same rules as channel aliases, matrix aliases allow us to reuse settings and have them automatically update to matching aliases in the queue list. So you have full control over which elements of the matrix are shared between aliases and which elements of the matrix are separated between aliases. So when you update an alias, all matching instances are updated automatically. A small addition, but now there's the option of the Q mode indicator on the master screen. This provides visual confirmation that auto update is switched on. And if you're working within Q groups, confirmation that adjustments you make are gonna write relative changes across the group. But more on this later. In earlier versions of software, the Q update rules were applied equally to all channels on the desk. But with so many different types of inputs, your chorus, your principles, your band, and the playback, you might need to apply different programming rules for different elements. With the new sections feature, we can divide the console into sections and then apply the theatre rules, the auto update and the groups, independently and differently per section of the desk. Sections also allows us to control how relative queue group updates are applied. So as a quick recap on queue groups, relative queue groups, this is great for mixing musical numbers where you might have a number of cues representing a single musical number. So first chorus, first chorus type structure. And the group of cues allows you to enter the group, make a change, and that change is then relatively applied to each cue in the group. So if you've pushed a fader up, say 2 dB, that 2 dB change will be relatively applied to each cue in the cue group. If you like the change, you can write it permanently or you can not update the cue group and when you come back and refire the show, 
but back to the original positions. So it's a great way of handling quick temporary relative changes across a group of queues. In 1528, this relative group update function is expanded to include other DB controllers. So previously it was faders only, but in this version it includes DB controllers generally. So aux sends, uh, EQ gains, dynamic thresholds, and so on. And then per section, per group, you can define how these relative updates uh, are going to work for your session. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see other console videos. And if you'd like some one-on-one theatre-based training, get in touch today.